Adwa, it's such a pleasure to be sitting here with you. It's such a privilege. I mean, you've an incredible force for change, a phenomenal force for change Thanks in culture. Thanks so much. Welcome Thank you to for Zeitgeist. having me. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I want to talk a little bit, I want to start talking to you about Girls Talk. Um, we collaborated back in April of last year by hosting a Girls Talk event at the Dazed Office. And since then, it's gone on to Berlin, it's gone on to LA and New York. Tell me, what have been some of the highlights of that journey of Girls Talk for you? I think, I mean, every day, every time a girl comes up to me and says what Girls Talk means to them, it kind of blows me away. Um, but the events that we've been doing are just, I mean, I wish I'd had something like that when I was at school. And it's just been amazing to have these, this widespread of speakers, you know, we are so unfiltered. We had this amazing girl called Tilly Lawless who we flew from Australia, who was a sex worker in Australia where it's legal. She did a talk. We had um, Professor Green on mental health in New York. We had um, Dr. Lauren who works really closely with us at Girls Talk talking about mental health. And she has an amazing kind of fun and almost light-hearted approach to it. We had, I mean, it's just the list goes on about, and it's so exciting, but the kind of, I suppose, the honesty, girls getting up on their seats and the sharing their truths. And we had this amazing poetry slam where girls, you know, delivered pieces of writing that they never, ever shown anyone about sexual assault, about um, periods, about being a young girl in the 21st century. So, I mean, every day it's exciting for me. Every day it's kind of like, I can't believe where it's, where it's gone. And did you see much differences between the different cities in terms of the audience and the type of issues that they were experiencing or was it actually very similar? The issues are the same. I think, you know, when I first started Girls Talk, I, I kind of, I mean, where the idea, when I first had the idea, I was living in LA and I was working on Skid Row and I was working at schools and I kind of, that was where I realized that, you know, I was working with girls from a completely different background from, um, who had grown up completely different to me, but they, we had very similar, um, we'd gone through very similar things in some senses. And so I think that's the beauty of these events is that the energy is quite different. I found the energy from London to New York a lot different. You know, girls were a lot more kind of, you know, that American approach, I can't really put it into words. It's just like, you know, standing on their seats, they were like a lot more, I mean, in London, we, they, we were a bit more like shy and a bit more kind of like, withdrawn but it was still amazing but the 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 circumstances and the the qualms and the happinesses are still the same from place to place i just want to pick up on something you said you said you were working on skid row with girls in la were you modeling at that time was that before modeling let's take us back to that moment because yeah. that seems an unusual place for you and people might not know your story so yeah. what, how did you end up doing that so i moved to la in February of 2015 and I wasn't modeling and I'd taken some time away to kind of get my life together and I was getting sober and I realized that London was not the place for me to get sober so I went as soon as I finished what felt like a year of treatment in and out of treatment I just packed my bags and I went to LA and I kind of I wasn't modeling I was in a very kind of like weird place in my life and so I thought, what better than to kind of get out of my own head and stop thinking about my own shit. Sorry, pardon me, mm -hmm. my, own <laughs> my own stuff, and start putting that energy into something else. I mean, what's so incredible with the Girls Talk platform is that you're sharing honestly about your experiences with mental health, with addiction, with depression, etc. and that's how, that's what led you to start Girls Talk because you saw the value of sharing those experiences and how that can transform pe people's lives, being open and taking away some of that shame that's held around those issues. But what was your, I mean, people here probably aren't aware of your story. So talk to us about 
you as a teenage girl, the things that you were experiencing, and then what, what took you to now being, you know, I mean, it's a completely transformative story. So share, us with, share with us your story. Okay, let's, let's try and put it into like a few, not a few words. Um, so, teenage Adjua, uncomfortable, spent every day kind of wanting to jump out of my skin, privileged, so a lot of guilt about feeling the way I did, about feeling sad, withdrawn from emotions, so almost every day I kind of had a, a, a sort of facade up and spent a lot of my time kind of lying about my feelings and who I was, um, wanted to be someone else, went to a predominantly white school, so kind of grew up wanting to have long flowy hair that blew in the wind and not braids. Um, amazing parents, amazing upbringing, but English mentality of st stiff upper lip, so you know, we didn't have those kind of emotional conversations in the household. Um, Boarding school traumatized me, and and then drugs came into my life, and it was, you know, not from the beginning. It was, you know, it was experimental. I was a teenager, but very quickly it became this this constant search for oblivion and something that I was doing to fill the void and the em emptiness that I felt felt inside. Um, but it wasn't casual drug use. I mean, you ended up ODing, you ended up going to treatment centers, you had a yeah. very, very serious yeah, so later on, issue with addiction. Yeah, so it kind of, to me, I always felt like I was self-medicating. So, you know, when it got to that point where my parents are like, you gotta go away, I was just, the best way I can explain it, all through this, I was exhausted. I was exhausted um, about pretending all the time. I had no idea who I was. Um, and so went to treatment in 2014, finished three months in Arizona, came back, went to a halfway house, um, OD'd and yeah, got kicked out, relapsed, went back in. And then, and just this, this mentality I had, I just spent so long doing it my own way that I was, unable to take anyone else's advice. Um, and although I'd kind of come to terms with the fact that I had to be sober, I was very, um, I didn't want to let anyone in. And so then it kind of came to a head in, on the 3rd of October, 2014, I tried to take my own life um, and was in a coma for five days you know, awful, sectioned, and then by my parents at Capio, and and then, you know, had took a bit of time, but I kind of had that realization that I needed to change things. Um, yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable, very, very moving to imagine that you came so close to not being here. Um, it's almost unbelievable. Um, there's so much shame attached to mental health and talking about these issues at the home, in the workplace, um, in society. Why, how did you work through that? When did it start to change for you, that conversation? And when did things start becoming positive for you in terms of you taking action to transform your life? I think you know, the idea of Girls Talk was, is stolen from AA meetings and group therapy, but what was really, like, life-changing for me and kind of changed the way I, I live my life is just being in these group therapy situations and having, you know, we were all from different backgrounds and lots of us had been through more traumatizing things, but in that room at that time, we all felt a certain feeling and we didn't want to be on this planet. We felt sad, we, we, life was unmanageable. And, and all we were told to do was be honest and talk openly and, and share. And so, 
And I couldn't believe it was that simple. I couldn't believe it was that simple just to start talking and start being honest. And so kind of, you know, that's where I started. I just started. And now I'm an open book. You can't really get me to shut up. <laughs> Tell people way too much stuff. <laughs> well, it's incredible that you, they can't, I mean, you're, 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 you're loved by young women and, and young people all over the world precisely for that honesty and for that openness. It's it connects people to you in a very powerful and very real way. There was a, a turning point in your career that I think is very important to just to touch on before we talk some more about Girls Talk, which is that moment where you came out publicly in a video um, where you shared for the first time the story that we just heard. Can you tell us a little bit about what that felt like and if it was, if you felt it was a risk to be open publicly and have that video shared online? I mean, it definitely wasn't a risk. Um, it felt very cathartic. Mm -hmm. I walked into that room with a star like you girls who, and I didn't think they would get, um, I didn't think they'd get those things out of me. And they're just very good at their job and they, just, they led me there. And, it was amazing to be open about it, but you know, the vid video didn't come out for a while and I kind of completely forgot what I'd done. And then suddenly it was out there in the open and my story was out there and um, I wasn't ashamed. I felt a bit like, you know, I was felt raw. I felt a bit scared for my parents that our story was out there. And I wasn't necessarily like working that much as a model. But this was how long ago? This was in, ooh. Two years ago? This was in 2015, end of 2015. Relatively recent. Yeah, yeah. Considering everything we've just seen on that yeah, screen. Yeah, so it's know? mad how, and that was the changing point. As soon as I opened my mouth, but I had no idea. I, I just had no idea that by sharing my story, I'd get this kind of influx of girls um, sharing back with me. Mm -hmm who had been through the same thing or who wanted, not necessarily advice, they just wanted someone to talk to. And that's where it all started, yeah. So it's Mental Health Awareness Week in the UK this week. You also work with Prince William, um, Prince William and Kate Middleton's charity, Heads Together. Um, tell us, you know, how can this audience help you promote your mission to take stigma away from mental health? What are some of the things that people can do? So this time last year, I had a very in-depth conversation with my mum about October the 3rd, 2014. And it, oh my God, I cannot even tell you how traumatic that was. Just speaking with that, that the person that's most close you to you. You did a face-to-face -face video face -to -face with her, four heads together. Or four heads together, yeah. 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 And so I suppose that in a nutshell is what we can do is start having those conversations openly with our family members, with our um, our children, not that I have children, with your children, um, with our brothers and sisters and just making that conversation part of your everyday life. I, and starting young, education is just key. I had no idea why I felt the way I did. I thought I was the only person on the planet that that would f you know, wake up one day and feel like the world was coming to an end and then wake up the next day feeling like high on life. And it was really confusing and it was very, and I felt a lot of shame about um, feeling depressed and I felt a lot of, um, a lot of confusion about feeling so anxious as well. So I think that's the first step is just having that ongoing conversation. And with Girls Talk, what is it? What do you need to happen for it to grow? What are your ambitions for Girls Talk? And how can this audience help you in that mission? Oh, good one. Just keep on spreading the word, I think. I have found something in Girls Talk that makes me more happier than I could possibly explain. It's the thing that gets me out of, the, out of bed in the morning. It, 
it's the first thing I think about and the last thing I think about. And um, it's as beneficial to me as I hope it is to the girls that I've, this community that I've created. I've created a tribe of women who are so unashamed and unapologetic and who stand on their chairs and they share their truth. So I think, you know, if you have daughters, tell them about Girls Talk. If you have, you know, we're opening the conversation to men and, you know, they're always, it's Girls Talk, but they're more than welcome to come. So we're opening, you know, tell your sons. And, um, and you know, I was constantly told, you know, Adria, you're not a therapist, you're not tra trained, you're not a counselor, but I, I can speak from experience and a lot of the time these girls were getting in contact because they just needed someone to talk to. And so this is what Girls Talk is, it's that intimate conversation. It feels like you're in your bedroom with your best friends and you're sharing your truths and it's, it's, it's beautiful beautiful to watch you know I spent a lot of time feeling like I didn't belong and finally at, you know I'm 26 this week finally at 26 I've created you know an amazing tribe of women and a community where I feel like I'm which I feel like I'm part of um, let's talk about social media very quickly so you know a lot of people in this room um, are aware of, you know, the high levels of anxiety that are caused by social media, especially amongst young people. Um, how did that influence and affect you? When I was getting sober, I went straight off um, any s sort of social media. It just felt like this, another lie. Um, another way to show people that I was kind of living my best life when I literally couldn't get out of bed. So I got off that very quickly. We weren't allowed it in treatment. So it was, and it's, it was just a distraction. It was a way for me to make myself feel like I wasn't on the right path. I think it can, if you're, if you're privy to that and you spend your whole time like going through, I mean, and you're in a sensitive mood, it can make you feel like you're the smallest thing on this planet and not doing the right thing. And I think that's definitely the poisonous side of it and something that I definitely hear my girls like speaking a lot about is just this. So my daughter's 15, she's yeah. on social media all the time and yeah. she's just blocked me from Instagram. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Is, should I be worried about that? No, 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 no. She's a, she, no. How do I talk to her about that? How do I say to her, um, Please accept my request to, she to, to follow you. She probably won't. She probably won't. And <laughs> I as mean, a my dad has a secret Instagram, and I just constantly get text messages being like, where, not where, there, not there, because I'm really dyslexic, so he's just always correcting my spelling mistakes. <laughs> um, but no, but she's, don't take it personally. No, don't take saying. it personally. Oh, okay. You know, in, it, Instagram is what Girls Talk uses, and it's what... I have to use for like modeling as well, but it is, we wouldn't be so like kind of, we wouldn't have followers in Australia and Asia and middle of nowhere America and all over England if it wasn't for social media. Um, and exactly. what you can do and what I hope I've done is I've been very lucky to have been given a platform through modeling and I think it's, 100% my responsibility to put out a good message and it's lazy if I don't and I think more people, I mean, the likes that you can get from putting up a selfie, why not put up, send out a better message? You can do both. That's a great answer. Adwa, I can't believe we've run out of time. Um, you're such a shining and powerful example Thanks. of someone who stands in their own truth, and your transformation is really, really inspiring. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Um, I wish we could have had more time, but you know the clock says we're finished. Is there anything you'd like to say or leave this audience with before we have to, before you have to leave the stage? No, I think you know. I'm just I thank you all, and I thank Google for having me here. So wonderful to be able to speak to like such all different audiences and I'm just very grateful every day to be here and to be able to share something that's so important to me so thank you yeah. thank you